Red Dead Redemption 2. The most beautiful game ever made, except if you're including 2017's award-winning masterpiece Dream Daddy, a daddy dating simulator. I mean, it's just objectively the perfect game, we can all agree on that. Anyway, we play as Arthur Morgan, who may have a rugged exterior, but inside he has a heart of gold. Well, not really. He more toes the line between being a hoodlum and a straight up psychopath, but at least he gives us a few cheap laughs along the way. We start our journey deep in the snowy mountains. The lads and I are on the run due to a bank heist going horribly wrong and winter is coming all over Arthur's chiseled jawline. We're currently looking for a place to stay and then we stumble across a cute little homestead. The people residing here are less cute and they get angry fast. We proceed to take them all down easily because we're the main characters. We loot the cabin and Arthur is genuinely slower at picking up condiments than I am. Imagine if you asked this guy to pass you the salt during dinner time. In the morning, we ride out to find John Marston who's become lost at the peak of a tall mountain. So a bank heist goes wrong and he decides a dangerous solo alpine hike is the solution to his problems. While tracking him, we find his horse who seems to have slipped and fallen over. We continue our search and then Arthur takes a sip of some Kentucky bourbon to warm himself up. The casual alcoholism I can live with, but I hope he gets tuberculosis as karma for littering. We find John who's looking in ship shop shape and carry him over to the horses. Some wolves roll up on us, but I've got a sawn off shotgun and I slay the beasts eventually. Not my best shooting. I then turn my gun to John in a brave attempt to euthanize the kid, but the game won't let me. Lucky man, I'm sure he'll live a long happy life and won't ever be ballsy enough to take on a dozen law enforcement officers at once. We take him back to camp and his wife and kid are super happy to see him. Imagine having a happy functioning family, that's pretty cringe. This is my room that I'm staying in while we wait for the snow to melt before we can head south. I have a quick chat to our leader Dutch and he doesn't even make eye contact. This is exactly what happens when you pay someone to sleep with you. I mean I assume, how would I know? The boys and I roll out and it looks absolutely heroic, I can't lie. We're off to kill a rival gang because if we don't, they'll come after us. The Dutch gives a speech and then as usual, I express my artistic talent with some snow drawings. Yes, one ball is bigger than the other, that's normal, and I even use some foliage as hair. Pretty creative. Our enemies have strategically set up their base of operations at the bottom of a cliff, the OG outpost. I follow Dutch and then we murder all of the Adriscal scum who are hiding here. They try and flee into the forest, but we chase them down. I then loot every single corpse because I get anxiety if I don't. While riding back to camp, I find one of them trying to run away. I tie him up and we now have our very own prisoner of war. I can't wait to treat him inhumanely. I spend my remaining days in the snow chatting to the lads and hunting deer for supper. Eventually the snowstorm clears, but instead of moving on, we decide to rob a train. We ride out and this is definitely my favorite part of the map, where the snow meets the forest biome resulting in a gorgeous and progressive biracial landscape. Things don't go exactly to plan and we have to jump onto the moving train. You guys know I love a cinematic train shot, so as you can imagine at this point of my playthrough, a tent was pitched but it wasn't at my gang's campsite. I take down all of the guards, mostly with my knife because the animations are dope. Even the engineer fought me, which was brave, but he ended up dying pretty horrifically. The carriage where the riches are is armored and so we all shoot our bullets at it to scare whoever's inside. Nothing like a bit of psychological brutality to make you feel like a cowboy. They all eventually come out and I'm faced with an ethical decision. This is one of those moments where Deadeye is best used to eliminate all the unarmed finance bros. I loot them all and all I get is 40 cents and a packet of cigarettes. Sounds like the name of a mediocre country music album. With the bag secured, we pack up and head south where it's warmer. This part is so wholesome, just plodding along with our wagons. My wagon wheel even falls off at one point. What a charming little disaster we find ourselves facing. Like the video if you get flabbergasted when your wagon wheel falls off. We arrive at camp and it's quite a nice spot. Everybody's excited to be out of the snow. I give myself a shave, going for a tasteful 80s adult film star moustache. I then go around gaslighting my friends to improve camp productivity. The old you would have had this place ship shape in a day. Don't take that tone with me. You're slipping, Grimshaw. What are you trying to do here? The prisoner is still with us and he's begging for food. I go over and help myself to a steaming hot bowl of stew and then eat it in front of the big girl. The first time I played this game, I kept my honor high, but this time I want Arthur to be a true outlaw. I still help with some chores though. There's no place at this camp for lazy Lucy's. Given Arthur has absolutely no drip, I decide to ride to Valentine and do a little clothes shopping. It's a slow ride as my horse's cardiovascular fitness is atrocious. The cheeky stallion has been punching way too many darts on Smoko again. 
I hitch him up and browse their clothing items, but they're all trash. Instead, I decide to do my favourite hobby in this game, which is following NPCs. It's impressive how they all have their own routines. Like this guy with the rake goes around and cleans every single stable it's inspiring. Man has better work ethic than me. He then puts his little rake back in its spot and starts to sketch out. He asks why I'm following him. He then starts running into the wilderness, fleeing for his life. I don't know what comes over me, but I decide to show mercy on Mutton Chops McGee. I head back and get myself a room at the local hotel and also a bath. You get to pick where Arthur washes himself. This might actually be better than Daddy Dating Simulator. You can even get a deluxe bath where this curvy lass massages you and makes you question why you're engaging in this side activity. I hop into my worryingly unmade bed and sleep until morning. I proceed to wait and wait for Mutton Chops McGee to return to work, but he never does. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it. A few of the lads are at the saloon getting wild. I join them and a fight immediately breaks out and I have to square up with this behemoth. Apparently his mum was an Olympic shot putter and his dad was a literal grizzly bear. I thought mud fighting was meant to be sexy and this confirms it most definitely is. I've already used my bath budget for today so that was kind of bad timing. I'm forced to go and bathe in mother nature's bathtub. There might not be a thick woman giving a shoulder massage but at least Arthur will probably catch Giardia. Back at the camp the prisoner is really starting to get desperate. He says he knows where some O'Driscoll boys are hiding and it'll take us there. We agree to let him show us because if you can't trust a member of the gang that hates you the most, then who can you trust? He was telling the truth and so we do some cool double assassinations with throwing knives. Stealth in this game is kind of like my downstairs member after seven whiskeys. It just never works. We end up having to shoot the place up and find a cool $600 under the fireplace. On my way back to camp, I swing by Valentine and you'll never guess who I find. Mutton Chops McGee. This absolute weapon has been promoted from Reiki Boy to Sack Carrier, which I imagine is quite a sought after promotion. The prestige in which this lad carries these sacks would make angels sing. He then puts a sack in the wrong pile, proving that he doesn't follow the rules. I proceed to tie him up and drag him through the streets of Valentine as he screams for mercy. Nobody is above putting sacks in the correct place and so no mercy was given. I then head back to camp and do a bit of sack carrying myself in Mutton Chops McGee's honour. I ensure to put the sacks in the correct pile because I don't think I'm better than everyone. I speak to Dutch and he asks if I can go and save the homie Mika from prison. That's crazy that one of our own has been captured and so I ride with Lenny as fast as we can. Right to the pub. Lenny wants to sink a couple of schooners and I'm not going to be rude about it. Arthur gets so blind that everyone starts looking like Lenny. Not going to lie, I'd smash. Yuck, not anymore. It's just a stereotypical classic night of dancing and drowning people in water troughs. TGIF moment. I wake in the hills and chunder everywhere. It's my gap year all over again except Arthur's fingers don't smell like seafood. I mean that literally. Nothing better than some pan fried salmon to kick off a night of drinking games. I see a train coming and so I ride up next to it and Arthur jumps aboard. His vertical leap is insanely impressive, that was like 2 meters. Don't skip your calf exercises. There's not even any guards aboard so I just take all the precious cargo for myself. Canned peaches secured, my third favourite variety of tin fruit. I get off at my stop, which is the town of Rhodes, in the hope that I can find some good clothes here. I enthusiastically run out of the train station and press Y, which tackles this man to the ground instead of mounting my horse. We fight and I clock him square in the jaw and he dies. Stupid hemophiliacs. I also end this guy's life for not wearing a shirt, as this is a Christian town and then I have to flee the area. I've always liked how vibrant Rhodes is. I return minutes later and they identify me as the criminal. I decide to just take my punishment and let them arrest me. I don't want any more trouble, I just want new clothes. They put me in cuffs and throw me into a cell, it's horrific. 24 hours later I'm released and I'm fined $6. The fine for a double murder is less than I've spent on baths. I run to the general store and the dodgy malakas have the same clothing options as Valentine. I'm so furious that I have a bubble bath. Not a deluxe bath though. Arthur's a big boy now, he washes himself. In the morning, I ride for Saint Denis, which has the finest tailors in the world. On my travels, I come across a common thief fleeing from one of the sugarcane plantations. I capture him and the owners are very thankful. Of course, I follow the estate guards as I was eager to see what the punishment was for stealing. If a double murder fine is $6, then they'll probably just give him a verbal warning and a back rub. To my surprise, he just stands there holding the thief on his shoulders. I thought Arthur had the strongest legs in the West, but clearly not. Rockstar probably didn't think anyone would follow this far, so I just shoot the guard and free the thief. Never let them know your next move. 
After a long excruciating journey of several minutes, I arrive in Saint Denis. The industrial revolution is turkey slapping bandits like Arthur Morgan in the face. Anyone who likes factories and coal mines should pave themselves a road all the way to the vibrant meadows of roads so they can find a nice tranquil place to hang themselves. The only good thing to come out of the industrial revolution was the normalization of child labor. At long last, I find myself some dripped out garments. I even go barefoot as a show of respect to my online character. Arthur Morgan is now the perfect gentleman. While leaving the store, this lady asks if I'll donate some money to war veterans. My grandpa fought in World War II, so I actually give $20 because it means a lot to me. What a big hearted woman out here doing this for the soldiers. I proceed to blast her with a sawn off shotgun and I take all the money she has, which is $25. If I hadn't come along and given generously, she was in hot water. My grandpa used to read me bedtime stories, but he'd change the words. Instead of Spot the dog goes camping with his friends, it'd be Spot the dog murders all of his friends. He was a good man, I miss him. On the ride back, I pass a woman being kidnapped. In an attempt to balance the morale book just a little bit, I save her. I take her down from the horse and lay her on the ground, ready to cut the ropes that are restraining her. The cut button is the same as the kick button, and I accidentally kick her in the ribs, which kills her. Arthur just murdered a minority, but at least he looked very fashionable doing it. Back at camp, Dutch is mad that I've been MIA for so long. Bullies typically project their own hardships onto those weaker than them. I proceed to do the same. Good morning, Arthur. My lord, you're old. Oh, don't start this nonsense. And time has done you few favors. Little Jack sure did draw the short straw for sleeping arrangements. I wonder if he'll grow up and have his own adventure where he avenges a close relative. Before I save Mika from prison, I decide to see how everybody else is going. First, I need to help out this Catholic priest we've been rolling with. He's drunk and starting fights that'll never win. This guy is a gambling addict, an alcoholic, a womanizer, and irresponsible, which actually makes him one of the most sincere Catholic priests I've ever seen. Still, we should probably find young Jack somewhere to sleep that has a lockable door. I ride the drunk man all the way back to camp. Now it's time to rescue Mika from prison. On the way, this guy recognizes me from the Blackwater bank job that went wrong and says he's going to get help. Off-screen repercussions coming into play. I chase him to this cliff where the Muppet manages to end up hanging by his little fingers. I have an ethical choice. Do I save him for a reward or let the boy fall to his death? I couldn't just let him fall, so I pull out my sawn off shotgun and blast him in the face. I lose an enormous amount of honor points, which is a small price to pay for his eternal silence. I continue towards the prison, but then a scallywag calls out to me wanting my assistance. Having spent a night in prison, I sincerely empathize with this convict. I break his chains and as a reward, he tells me of a cabin filled with riches just north of here. While searching, I find some loggers and I just thought it was so cool that when the tree falls, it startles all the animals. The little details are insane. I search for quite some time and eventually locate the cabin. It's a sweet little place. The owner has a donkey and I do laps on it. This donkey is my new favorite thing in the world. I let all the chickens out as a fun little Christian prank. I don't want to spoil the plot of Chicken Run for you, but this is it. I head inside and a woman starts yapping at me about trespassing. I just start taking all of her belongings, it's pretty brutal. I straight up steal chunks of bread that this little minx was just munching on. Eventually she reaches breaking point and says she's going to get her sons to take care of me. She hops onto her donkey and rides off into the wilderness like the alpha granny she is. I finish rubbing her and even find myself an automatic shotgun. Now time for the great escape. Meek is being held at the town of Strawberry. I have a chat with him through the window and he asks me to pull the bars off which is the way most people do it. I decide to try an alternate method. I waltz right in with my automatic shotgun and take all the prison guards down. I break Mika out of his cell and he asks for a gun. Of course I hand it to him and he immediately executes his cellmate. I don't think Mika enjoyed being a prison wife, that felt quite personal. A huge shootout entails as everybody tries their best to stop us. One of my friends went to prison for a while and I used to visit him. I was a fish out of water. Everyone else looked like they were in a gang and relative to them I looked like I was on my way to bible study. I started trying to dress more gangster by dripping myself out in Adidas but it didn't really work. The moral of the story is if your friend goes to prison, get some face tattoos and do at least a dozen cycles of steroids so you don't feel like a silly goose. With Mika safe, it's time to tie up a few loose ends. I head back to Granny's cabin and to my absolute delight, I hear voices inside. It's her sons and they're here for vengeance, but so am I. I attempt to open the door, but I'm pushed back and forced into a Deadeye encounter. I cancel it and begin shooting all of the sons the normal way. I'm saving my Deadeye for one person in particular. The shootout is intense and many sons were lost. 
A granny then comes out, and I dead eye all six shots of my cattleman's revolver right onto her torso. She may be the hottest piece of ass this side of Blackwater, but sometimes you have to kill attractive people, it is what it is. I head inside, and on the table I find a lockbox. An entire family butchered for $73. Arthur Morgan really is the cheekiest man in the West. There is still, surprisingly, one more loose end that needs to be tied up. As the sun begins to set, I ride towards Valentine with haste. I head straight to the stables, and there he is. Mutton Chops McGee. God only knows how this soldier is still alive, but I activate my dead eye and fill this hay-carrying stable raking degenerate with bullets. The Queen just passed, which is really sad, but not as sad as the fact that 50% of you aren't subscribed to my YouTube channel. Subscribe, you malakas. If you enjoyed this video, hit like. I reckon I could happily do an entire playthrough of this game, so let me know in the comments. I love you.